so I'm shooting it on the phone. I thought I'd pull the camera out because the past few days Tom and I, Tom being the chef that we've got on board, I think you might have met him in a couple of videos, we've really cracked on these past few days and we've got quite a lot of stuff done. There have been a few hiccups along the way but nothing that we've not been able to overcome and find a solution for. So I'm going to pick the camera up, we'll flip it around to the front facing uh, camera, pick the phone up should I say, and uh, we'll take a few shots and discuss what we've done in here, the problems that we've uh, discovered that have cropped up and the solutions that we're putting into place and then um, hopefully later on in the week we'll be able to give you another update once we've resolved all of these issues. Okay so let's pick the camera up and have a look around. Right, well this is the kitchen. Let's see if we can get in the corner and get a holistic view of everything that's going on. You can kind of see what we've got set up over there and then what we've got over here and then of course what we've got as you come in from the restaurant itself. So that's probably a good place to start. We'll kind of take you through what will be considered the ordering process. So a client will come into the pub and they'll find a seat in the restaurant and then they'll come up to the bar where they'll greet one of our wonderfully friendly staff members and the staff member will place an order. We use this Clover POS console at the moment. It's okay, there are lots of hidden charges so I wouldn't recommend it. So once the order has been placed with a member of staff then the customer will return to wherever they're sat I'm sure they can either be seated in the main area of the pub if they're just having a little snack maybe they want to sit in the window and watch the world go by or indeed they want to come into the restaurant area proper so we've got extra seating downstairs which I think everybody's seen before down there and around the corner but this seating here was installed specifically for dining. So we've got about 28 covers is the correct term. And then of course, in the summertime, when the weather changes, because at the moment it's considerably drearier than I like, we'll have another few dozen covers outside to kind of uh, bring us up to more clients in the bar area, in the restaurant area. You know what I mean. Anyway, I'm waffling. So we'll have, the customer will come and sit down at one of these tables, quite sizable tables too, seat six. And then uh, the order will go through into the kitchen while they sit there and wait, hopefully with a nice pint of vacant gesture. So in the kitchen, we're gonna have Two chefs on, Tom and Matt, and they'll be stationed in here. So we have separate areas for reasons of um, environmental health and health and safety. So some of these things, are, pieces of equipment are staying in here, some aren't. This freezer, for instance, that will be going. I've installed this large double sink so this is going to be the pot wash sink. It's going to be big enough for pots and pans. As you can see from the dust on the side there, which whoever was on shift last night completely ignored and didn't clean it up because they're lazy. Uh, you can see that we've installed 
this set of double stainless steel shelving. Bought from eBay, I think they were around 50 to 60 pounds a set and they are solid. Once they've got stuff on, they're gonna be fine. And then to keep the environmental health officer happy, we're gonna be installing a separate sink here for dregs out of glasses and waste and you know anything else like that so it doesn't come near the pot wash sink then we have here the glass washer as you can see nice and shiny as a glass washer should be and then just here this is going to be uh, during service this will be a dirty dishes table so the empties come in scrape the food into a bin and they go on there awaiting cleaning uh, but before we open in the day, it will double up as a prep table. Over here we've got a Williams commercial freezer, which has quite a lot of capacity in there, as you can see. So, plenty of shelves, nicely itemised and separated stock. So, again, keeping the EHO happy. This was quite an enjoyable afternoon, getting this beast in. So this is a massive double refrigerator. Uh, this one's an Inomac, if anyone's familiar with the brand. And inside, we've got shelves, they're all in a bit of a odd kind of uh, position at the moment, because we've been using it to store the stainless steel shelving out of the way, because the kitchen's relatively small. So here's some more stainless steel shelving to go up. And yeah, I mean, literally, all the staff could get into this double fridge. It's massive. We do, however, need to replace the seals on it. So that's something I'll be looking at on eBay today. We did get a quote from a company that supply the Inomac seals independently, but each seal, just one seal all the way around, was almost a hundred pounds. And I think that is a little bit cheeky. And then we're moving on to this big table here that's actually doubling up as a workbench at the moment while we're doing all the stuff in here. This is gonna be a big prep table, crockery storage, utensil storage, mixer, blender, all that kind of stuff underneath. On the top, big prep area for prepping bakery goods, fruits, vegetables, that kind of stuff. On the back as well, we're gonna have bolted on here a heated gantry, which will act as the Passover for when the food is ready to go out and the chef's calling for service, as they say. All new, all new cliches for me. In this corner here where, where we have the bin, we're also gonna be having a hand wash sink just here, mainly because the pipe work is there and we can just attach it. Here we've got the three phase electricity which I put in just this week, and that is now powering our four fryers which have cleaning solution in them. And we've been doing boil tests on these. Everything works perfectly, I might add. The microwave here is yet to find a home. We're not sure where that's gonna live yet. We've got the big six burner cooker and double oven. And also this is the piece de resistance, the huge Linkat char grill, which has, I think, seven burners on it. It's absolutely massive. I could get on there like a suckling pig and roast myself. It's m oh, gigantic, humongous, massive. So everybody, all, all the chefs are really looking forward to cooking on this. I think it's going to be fantastic. Over here in the corner, next to the grill, we have the meat prep area. So that's all this table will have on it. Prep meat and prep fish on different boards, of course. Up here we have some 63 amp residual current devices and these are protecting the two fryers over there. So they're your uh, electric shock protection if you like and then downstairs we have 63 amp circuit breakers for overload protection. As you can see we've also installed uh, three 1200 by 300 stainless steel shelves on the back wall to allow the cooks and the chefs, should I say, to uh, have access to pots, pans, spices, anything else that they need to just put to one side 
before, uh, well, during cooking, should I say. And then up top, we inherited the canopy, but it didn't have a fan or any baffles in it. So we bought these stainless steel grease baffles. And uh, behind that one there is a fan, which I'm experimenting with a speed controller. And that will be able to control the extraction rate. And coming around here from the meat fridge, uh, fridge, meat prep table, we have a saladette. So this saladette has a refrigerated um, saladette. <laughs> so this is kept cool independently of the refrigerator underneath. And then underneath we have a three door refrigerator. Uh, all of these pieces of equipment, by the way, have been supplied to us by RTH Traders in Sheffield. Uh, their prices are extremely good. They're accommodating, nice people. It was nice to go over there. It's a shame I didn't get any of this on the vlog, but we really have been up against it. So all these fridges, plenty of shelving and space, of course, for uh, food and, um, you know, keep everything chilled and fresh. Underneath here, we've got a buffalo grill, just for kind of... Uh, you know, putting a crusty top on something. Also, we don't know where that's going to live. We're thinking maybe on a shelf in this area somewhere above the hand wash. I'm not sure yet. We will figure that out. And uh, that pretty much completes the tour, I think, of the kitchen. So, some of the problems that we've had so far. The main issue, and one that's becoming the most expensive, unfortunately, has been the gas supply. So you can see that the gas comes in here and it's kind of piped up from downstairs where we've got the gas meter in the cellar, but this piping is undersized for us to supply the burners that we're gonna be installing. So we need to get um, a gas engineer out to change all that pipe work and install these for us correctly. And on top of that, the regulations changed in 2001 stating that any kitchen with gas appliances must have a gas interlock system which means that when, when the fans are off then you can't operate any of the burners, it kind of locks the gas out. So that interlock system is another expense which we didn't budget for along with how much the gas pipes are going to cost. So the fan that I've installed up in here which cost around £125, maybe undersized. So I've had to look for an alternative and we might have to do some work outside on the spiral ducting stack. Uh, so yeah, the interlock is gonna sit over here on this wall and that incorporates two fan speed controllers, which I'm gonna have to build independently and an emergency stop. So if, there's an issue and the chefs need to vacate the kitchen relatively quickly. They can just bang the emergency stop and then head through this door here and straight out of the fire escape. So easy route to egress there, I think, which should keep the fire safety officer happy as well. Um, so yeah, the interlock system controls the fans to an extent, or the fans control the interlock system would be a more accurate description. So if you don't have your fans on, you can't have the gas on. And the way this works is that the gas interlock system has a current sensor. And once it senses a current going to your fans, then it opens a solenoid valve on the gas inlet, which will be down here somewhere, allowing the gas to flow to your appliances. And then obviously if one of your fans break down, then the gas cuts out. So you need to have the extraction here sufficient to keep the CO2 levels in the kitchen below 2,500 parts per million, is what I'm told. Or you can calculate it on changes of air per hour. So we've measured the volume of this whole kitchen and did a back of a cigarette packet calculation. And we kind of came up with these figures so we've got 70 cubic meters in the kitchen and uh, that's how big the kitchen is. And that fan that I've installed is sufficient to move 4,900 cubic meters per hour. The regulations state a minimum 
of 40 air changes per hour, which means if we've got a room at 70 cubic meters, we need to be changing 3,100 cubic meters per hour. Our fan will do 4,900, so I believe we are in spec. I believe we're in spec, but they're gonna come and do some more testing. And they're testing to the BS6173 standards, which all commercial catering kitchens have to adhere to now. So as well as extracting the air at that rate, we also need to replace that air with fresh air. It can't be drawn in from the restaurant and it can't be drawn in from the pub area. It has to come from outside. So we need to install what's known as a make-up air ventilation system. Yes, so up here we are going to require some ducting running all the way across that top wall coming in through there where those tiles are, just in that corner above the fridge. And this is going to be piped outside. I'll show you where we're going to make the hole. It has to come through, this is the top of the stairs by the way where we've got the rotor and everything. It has to come through that wall over there, up in the top corner. So we'll be high up doing this, all the way along and in through there. So I've got two cutouts to do ultimately, which I'm not gonna enjoy doing. I might be able to pipe that in a diagonal if I'm lucky. Hopefully I can, and that shouldn't be a problem. So we need to put another intake fan on that wall. We need some flexible duct in up to there and then we need to go in and then once we're in the kitchen the regulations state that the amount of air that your extractor fan is removing 85% of that air as a maximum needs to be provided by the air intake fans and uh, they'd say 85% is a maximum because you want to maintain a positive pressure coming in from your bar area so the smells and the products of combustion don't leave the kitchen and go into the restaurant or bar area. So the remaining 15% of that air will come from seepages, if you like. It's a great word, isn't it? Around the edges of the doors, through the floorboards, all that kind of stuff, any gaps. So, yeah, a lot to think about to make sure that we confirm, conform to uh, BS6173, but all of this is there for a reason. I know it's a lot of red tape, but it keeps our staff safe and happy, and it makes sure that everybody, including our clients, are also happy and everything's kept as well as it can be. So, there we go. That's a quick tour, folks, of uh, where we are with the kitchen development. Um, the pipe work, by the way, I didn't say, uh, we've got a quote in to change 18 metres of gas pipe work and install the gas interlock and then do the testing is going to cost us just short of £3,000. It's a lot of money that we didn't expect to spend. So we've had to make the decision of getting a business loan to facilitate the opening of the kitchen. Yeah, we've come in well over budget. So all I'll say is anybody thinking about doing a project like this, Make sure you have funding options available for you. We were lucky that we've been trading over a year and we're able to kind of lean on the bank and get a little bit of dosh off of them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> without your continued support on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, and particularly on Patreon, I don't think we'd be getting this far because it really is subsidising my income so I'm not a burden on uh, the brew shed, the company, by taking a huge wage out of it and that allows us to grow the business. And that, as well, allows us to continue to make content for you guys on YouTube. So I hope you appreciate it. I know that uh, a lot of your favorite YouTubers at the minute, Tom, for instance, there's a few others as well, we're all busy with projects that take quite a lot of time. And whilst these would be fantastic opportunities for YouTube videos, you know, Tom moving into his new house, me creating a commercial kitchen, all really, really like interesting subjects. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't a project that I'm just doing on my own, and nor Tom's, I guess. There are people relying on us getting these projects completed for their livelihood. 
So it's been one of those situations where I've had to say, just put the camera down and get on with the job. And it's enabled us to get this far this quickly. So I'll try and keep you updated with recaps. One of the reasons why I've been able to do that this morning is because I'm in really early. Uh, I don't normally come to work uh, before kind of eight, nine o'clock in the morning because uh, none of the other staff start until then and uh, Tom can't start until the afternoon because of childcare, that kind of stuff. So it's pointless me being here on my own. And then I've been working till, well, 10 o'clock some nights to try and get this all done. And I'm sure you can appreciate it'll be very, very difficult for me to be editing videos at that time when I've, you know, not spent any time at home with a family. I know everybody understands. We've got a real good community here on YouTube. So ignore my waffle. I do it all the time because I feel a little bit guilty, but I know I've got your support and you guys have my back out there. So, yeah, big thumbs up for that. I'm going to sign out and, uh, yeah, stick around. Make sure you're subscribed. There will be more updates to come. And, of course, once this kitchen's complete, we'll be bringing in our products from the brewery and utilising them in dishes. And I'm sure Tom would be happy for us to film a few of those, you know, some amazing steak and ale pile, pile, <laughs> amazing steak and ale pie, and all the other good, good dishes that we can make by using products from all aspects of the company. Fresh and local, that's how we like to keep it. Anyway, folks, cheers for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.